P and O, formerly the Peninsula and Oriental Steam Navigation Company, was a British shipping and logistics company dating from the early 19th century. Formerly a public company, it was sold to DP World in March 2006 for £3.9 billion. DP World currently operate three P&O branded businesses, P&O Ferries, P&O Maritime and P&O Heritage. P&O Cruises was spun off from P&O in 2000, and is now owned and operated by Carnival Corporation and PLC. The former shipping business, P&O Nedloyd, was bought by and is now part of Maersk Line. History Early years and expansion, 1822–1900 In 1822, Brodie McGee Wilcox, a London ship broker, and Arthur Anderson, a sailor from the Shetland Isles, northern Scotland, went into partnership to operate a shipping line, primarily operating routes between England and Spain and Portugal. In 1835, Dublin shipowner Captain Richard Bourne joined the business, and the three men started a regular steamer service between London and Spain and Portugal, the Iberian Peninsula, using the name Peninsula Steam Navigation Company, with services to Vigo, Oporto, Lisbon and Cadiz. The company flag colours are directly connected with the peninsula flags, the white and blue represent the Portuguese flag in 1837, and the yellow and red the Spanish flag. At the height of the Carlist Wars the British lent their support to the legitimate heirs of Spain and Portugal and all three of P&O founders played their part, from gun running to chartering steamers. As a consequence of this association and involvement P&O officers are the only merchant navy officers entitled to wear swords. In 1837, the business won a contract from the British Admiralty to deliver mail to the Iberian Peninsula and in 1840 they acquired a contract to deliver mail to Alexandria in Egypt. In 1847, shortly after the Opium War, P&O entered the opium trade, shipping 642,000 chests of Bengal and Malwa opium in the next 11 years. They faced stiff competition from the incumbent shippers, Jardines and the Apcar line. As the Peninsula and Oriental Steam Navigation Company was incorporated in 1840 by a royal charter its name therefore included neither PLC nor Limited. Topic early 20th century years 1900 to 1945 mail contracts were the basis of P&O's prosperity until the Second World War but the company also became a major commercial shipping line and passenger liner operator In 1914 it took over the British India Steam Navigation Company which was then the largest British shipping line, owning 131 steamers. In 1918, it gained a controlling interest in the Orient Line, its partner in the England-Australia mail route. Further acquisitions followed and the fleet reached a peak of almost 500 ships in the mid-1920s. In 1920, the company also established a bank, P&O Bank, that it sold to Chartered Bank of India, Australia and China in 1927. 
At this time it established a commercial relationship with Spinney's of Haifa, that developed into a major regional high-end grocery store chain, which eventually provided shipping services access to much of the Middle East. Until 1934 it operated liners from Key West, Florida to Havana, then it operated from Miami to Cuba until 1960. Eighty-five of the company's ships were sunk in the First World War and 179 in the Second World War. Topic post war, 1945 to 2000. After 1945, the passenger market declined to India but boomed to Australia with the advent of paid passages for literate and healthy European immigrants known as £10 POMs. P&O built 15 large passenger liners, including SS Himalaya, SS Chusan, SS Arcadia and SS Iberia 1954, culminating in SS Canberra, its last and largest in 1961. By 1968 over one million immigrants had arrived, many via P&O, and Australia ended the program. P&O entered the cruise market and began to sell and scrap many of these liners. It concentrated mainly on cargo ships. It entered the tanker trade in 1959 and the roll-on-roll-off ferry business in the mid-1960s. P&O and Orient Line were formally merged in 1960 to form P&O Orient Lines. In 1964, Orchides and Orenzi 1950 were transferred to the P&O fleet. The name Orient Line was dropped altogether in 1966 when Orsova and Oriana were also transferred to the P&O fleet. In 1969 British and Commonwealth Shipping, Furness Withy, P&O and the Ocean Steamship Company established Overseas Containers Limited to exploit containerization. By the early 1980s it had converted all of its dry cargo liner routes to container operations and in 1986 it bought out the remaining OCL partners, renaming the operation P&O Containers Limited P&OCL was merged with Ned Lloyd in 1996 to form P&O Ned Lloyd. In 1972 P&O formally absorbed the British India Steam Navigation Company by. The amalgamation of these two companies began in 1914 but BI had retained its own identity until this time. Strick Line and Hain Norse, amongst several other lines were also taken over in the early 1970s. BI cargo ships were renamed Strath M, Strathmore, Strathmuir, Strathmay, etc., or Strath C, Strathcarron, Strathcarroll. The Strick Line ships renamed Strath A, Strathanna, Strathaird, Strathatric, the Big A, etc., and the Hain North ships Strath T, Strathtruum, Strathtay, etc. The newest ships were six Strath DS, Strath Dune, Strathdens, etc. SD-14s built in Sunderland. P and O also built six ships in stocks near Gdansk, Poland, the Strath ES, and two ships in Japan, the Strath FS, and bought into DOT, a naval shipping company. In 1975 P&O established Pandoro for operation of the company's Irish Sea Roro routes. Pandoro was an acronym for P&O Row. 
In 1998 P&O European Ferries Irish sea Limited was formed by the internal merger of Pandoro Limited and P&O European Limited, to run the Irish Sea routes. In 1987 P&O took over the European Ferries Group plc, to which it had previously sold its cross-channel ferry services in 1985, which traded as Townsend Thorazen, and renamed the company P&O European Ferries. Over the last quarter of the 20th century P&O diversified into construction management through the Bovis companies, which it owned from 1974 to 1999, property investment and development, and a variety of service businesses including exhibition and conference centers, but most of these activities were disposed of following the company's decision in March 1999 to concentrate on maritime and transport. Its P&O ports and P&O cold logistics divisions developed from P&O's operations in Australia, where it has a leading position in these fields. Fastcraft is the name given to the service implemented after the split-up of P&O European Ferries in 1998. The first ship was called Superstar Express, entered service in 1998 and sailed alongside the Pride of Cherbourg and Pride of Hampshire to Cherbourg and back. Topic MS Herald of Free Enterprise Incident On 6 March 1987, the roll-on, roll-off ferry, MS Herald of Free Enterprise, capsized off the coast of Zeebrugge with 80 crew and 459 passengers aboard. 193 were killed in the capsizing. The operator of the ship, Townsend Thorazen, had been purchased by P&O in 1986. The incident resulted in a coroner's inquest and a public inquiry. A jury at the coroner's inquest found a prima facie case that the company was guilty of manslaughter, and the Crown Prosecution Service charged the company and seven employees see corporate manslaughter. The charges did not result in any convictions. As part of the public inquiry, Lord Justice Sheen wrote in a July 1987 report that Townsend Thorazen, the company, possessed a disease of sloppiness which permeated the company's hierarchy. The cases surrounding the incident set a precedent for the prosecution of corporations in cases of manslaughter and criminal negligence in English law. Topic divestments, 2000–2005 On 23 October 2000 P&O divested its cruise business to form P&O Princess Cruises. In April 2003 P&O Princess came together with the Carnival Corporation to form Carnival Corporation and PLC. In June 2004, P&O sold its 25% stake in Royal P&O Nedloyd, a major container shipping business into which its container operations had been merged in 1996. The container company was later June 2005 purchased by AP. Moller Maersk Group. Topic takeover by DP World 2006 on Sunday the 30th of October 2005 the Sunday Times reported that P&O was in takeover talks with Thunder FZE a wholly owned subsidiary of Dubai Ports World a company owned by the government of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates 
On 29 November, the P&O Board announced that it would be recommending an offer of 443 pence per share, worth £3.3 .3 billion, .7 billion to its shareholders. In early December P&O regained its status as a FTSE 100 company when BPB plc was taken over. A bidding war commenced when Singapore's PSA International made a £3.5 billion offer, which Dubai Ports World then topped with a bid of £3.9 billion $7 billion. Despite speculation that it would make a higher bid, PSA withdrew, and in February 2006 shareholders voted in favour of the offer from Dubai. The combined group is the world's third largest ports operator. Topic takeover controversy 2006 When the merger was approved by the U.S. government in February 2006, the Bush administration came under fire from critics who questioned the decision to allow an Arab-owned company to oversee U.S. ports. The move placed the leasehold interests of P&O in New York City, Newark, Baltimore, Miami, New Orleans, and Philadelphia under the control of Dubai Ports World. U.S. operations represent 10% of P&O's worldwide operations, and consist primarily of cranes and terminals. Many U.S. politicians and media commentators assumed implicitly that the merger would affect port security at ports that P&O either managed or handled the loading and unloading of ships. David Osler, industrial shipping editor of Lloyd's List said that U.S. security procedures and overall port control would not be affected by the transaction. Several U.S. states sought ways to block the move, citing security concerns as well as the possibility of losing related leases of foreign ports. President Bush stated he would veto any legislation created with the intent to interfere with the change. Topic sale of assets 2006 on the 9th of March 2006 DP World agreed to sell its terminal operations at the American ports to an American company. On the 11th of December 2006 it was announced that AIG Global Investment Group, a division of insurance giant AIG, had acquired P&O Ports North America for an undisclosed sum. Investing in infrastructure had become the latest hot item for financial firms, and P&O represented a high-profile asset. AIG Gig was an experienced infrastructure investor globally, having also recently acquired the London City Airport. On the 16th of December 2006, P&O Dover Holdings Limited, a subsidiary of P&O and DP World, sold its shares on Sheku Container Terminals Phase One, 22.5%, and Phase Two, owned indirectly. 22.5% shares, a port of Shenzhen, People's Republic of China, to a joint venture company of China Merchants Holdings International and Modern Terminals Limited MTL, for which MTL bore the whole cost. Shenzhen was ranked fourth in list of world's busiest container ports and Sheku Container Terminals was one of the four major terminals of Shenzhen. Topic operations P&O aka DP World manages two ports in the UK, a container port at the north end of Southampton and one on the north bank of the Thames in Essex. 
P&O operates the following ferry companies, P&O Ferries P&O Portsmouth P&O Irish Sea P&O Stena Line Topic see also DP World Other port operators in the UK include, Associated British Ports Mersey Docks and Harbour Company, a unit of Peel Ports PD Ports P&O Maritime Services <laughs>